So I start as a software for interactive stars. Um, well, this workshop thing to show um, how to use it to control uh, sound and uh, artistic creation software. So first, there is some base C++ library on which we build on, and then the, the sequencer. So um, some work that have been done with ISR are, for instance, Tumbleweed by Lee Balthazar, which um, <laughs> 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 well, I don't know if it's in English. Yes. Well, I don't know if it's in English. Yes. Well, I don't know if it's in English. And they try to make uh, an evolution uh, in time of, well, they try to score their um, vapors and uh, lights and sounds and synchronize everything to make, well, uh, interactive and plastic arts. Uh, so there is also um, uh, Quarry, which is uh, some installation. So you have all these spatial speakers and uh, Three to five people with mobile phones, so they can move freely in the installation. And during uh, 30 minutes, they can trigger a uh, chance of effect in the sound. They can start new pulses, new, well, introduce new elements into the music. And the, comp the composer uh, said, "Okay, if at three minutes somebody does this, then we will uh, take this pass in the score. Else, we will uh, do something else. For instance, we will." Make a decrescendo or something. Um, well, iStore is used to make this kind of partitions which look a bit like programs. 
So, well, high score looks like this, for instance. This is a part of the score for, uh, for this one. Um, yeah, you have the time that goes from uh, left to right, and at some points, uh, interaction can happen. And if you compose a race down here, I know that there will be an interaction. And, for instance, I score controls some max patch, so I do you know max MSP. Yeah. Okay, so I score will control all the parameters in the max patch and send them by OSC across time. It also works with PDE or any other software. So, yeah, it's for all this kind of music, video, transmedia, plastic arts. And I score is about setting, giving a temporal structure to interactive installations. So, one of the first goals is to have well, we are not to maximum interoperability yet, but we try to reach more possible software. And to do this, we're working on an OSC library that allows uh, any kind of software basically to give its uh, parameters so that other software can list them through networks. So I scroll over it's this. So for instance, this is Jamoma. It's a set of Max MSP libraries. And in Jamoma, you they did a model view separation of uh, max patches, that is, you have model patches where you, well, you do the single processing, all these things, and then you have you can have multiple views where you have all your controls, and your model parameters can then be controlled also through the network. So it's just one view in max, but you can have as many views as you wish in JavaScript or whatever kind of environment you like to make your graphical interfaces. So. The foundation of iSCore is a library which is called Libosia, <coughs> which allows for automatic discovery of uh, the OSC parameters of uh, software. And so it started as a, well, it really started only as an OSC library, but we're trying to extend it to well, other protocols. And also it has very uh, limited number of scoring primitives, so automations, uh, time spans, stuff like this. So we have following protocols implemented in uh, Libosia, so these four ones come by default and these three, one, these three protocols require Qt because uh, they can be scripted, so I will explain why. So, for instance, if I have some, some software in iScore, it will look well, a bit like a tree like this with all the parameters that I can control. And if for some reason my software doesn't really map to a tree structure, I can give a script that will do, okay, when you receive this message, you parse it and then uh, you map uh, whatever you want to uh, whatever value in your tree. Uh, so I don't know if you do program, but this is how the API looks in C++ and in Open Frameworks, in PD, in uh, Python, uh, in C Sharp, so for Unity 3D to make uh, also well scores of uh, well, video games, uh, Qt, uh, C, um, so, oh, there are a lot of environments in which we are trying to make it available, and we try to leverage every time the best practice of each environment. And so the guy, so Pierre Pouchard is making the Super Collider port and is trying to make it fit the most clearly in. This per collider environment. So, for instance, here I just have to restart something, but I have a very small score uh, with uh, so first on the processing, and in my score I just have well here just a small curve, and we'll say that the curve will last forever. So I just make play, and well, as you would expect, time goes from left to right. And uh, what's uncommon for a sequencer is, for instance, here you have a loop. So that is, you have behavior, temporal, but that looks a bit like a pattern in Ableton Live, stuff like this. So here, if I look my processing patch, which wasn't running. Uh, I have a little quick question. Yeah. How to manage the time? How to, the... how to manage, uh, I'm sorry, uh, in which uh, way? You can uh, set the time steps and. If you want uh, more story. Oh, you can control speed, for instance. Alright, my speed. Yeah, you have a speed slider for everything. And speed is, uh, so, as you can see, it's a bit uh, hierarchical. So here you have a box, and here you have a box, and here you have a box. So if you set the speed at the parent level, for instance, of the whole size. 
what did you say? You have bugs? Uh, bugs, I'm sorry. Uh, box. Ah, boxes. Logs. Ah, the, the boxes. Ah, boxes. Yeah, boxes. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so sorry for my English. <laughs> uh, for instance, here I selected the top one, and if I make it smaller. Hello, Hello. welcome. Uh, do you know if it was starting at uh, 2 or half past 2? Yes, I know. Okay, no, because uh, I was told it was at half past two. Because uh, uh, I wanted to go to the Okay. <laughs> uh, so here, yeah, I can set the speed of the parent and it will change the speed of the children. And so here I have my uh, uh, processing score. So processing is just a um, graphical, well, it's a creative coding environment. And here my I score automation will just change the color. It's a nice. So, uh, so just to, to explain for our newcomer. Um, sorry, what, what's your name? Joseph. Okay, enchanté. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, I was playing. So I score is an environment for scoring parameters. <laughs> uh, so for to make interactive installations, interactive shows. So plastic arts and scores them in time. So if you have multiple software uh, that control uh, well lights, a video, music, you can use iScore to orchestrate them in a single synchronized timeline. So here I'm showing a tumbleweed, um, another musical installation, um, Max Patch. So do you use uh, Max MSP by any chance? Uh, Max MSP. Uh. Sure data. No. no, I am a musician, okay. but not in front. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I uh, <coughs> little pass for pass. Oh, okay. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so, yeah, so this is basically to control other software that were made. And now that you have a software that, for instance, generates some sound, you want to store this sound across time. So, for this, we well, we have two parts in software. One uh, timeline part, so where time goes from uh, left to, to right, like most sequencers, like uh, Cubase and stuff. And a list of all the parameters that we want to control. So here, for instance, I have a pure data patch here. Uh, I have my uh, processing uh, patch. The processing is what does this uh, graphic. Uh, uh, graphical weathering and uh, here I forgot to plug it but I also have a MIDI control surface that I can leverage to well control uh, things so um, yes uh, iScore has very well a bit more complicated than other uh, music software, but has a special time model. So basically, we have instantaneous things, so for instance, playing a note, and durations. So we represent in the score instantaneous things like this. So for instance, you will send a single message, play something, or do something, and it won't last at all. And uh, then if you want to make a behavior in time, you can use automations, so that is you can make a gradation volume uh, or whatever your software allows you to control. So I just try to make um, PD work. I'm sorry. Uh, Uh, no, I don't know why, but I'm completely unable to make any sound come out of Jack on this machine, so it okay. works on all my... Hello! Uh, welcome. So, yeah, I make a quick 
presentation. So, so I, I thought that it started at two, so I, I started a bit early, but it seems that it's okay. It's okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, so I just try it. Oh yeah, no, there are because well, I, I tried with the ice core a few features and well, they made sound. But, okay. So well, for instance, I just put some sound in ice core instead. Would you plug? Yep. Uh, and and and. Uh, uh, and just drag some sound. So here for instance, <coughs> some sound, hopefully. Okay, so uh, you can have in the score, well, either sound files, sound effects, uh, and control of other software. So I score is mainly about controlling other software. So if it worked, I would show PD, but it does not. And so to get back a bit on my slide, um, so I score controls multiple protocols and provides a library that allows you to embed in your own software everything needed to uh, do some controls. So it has bindings for, uh, so it's based on C++, but it has bindings for so open frameworks, uh, PD, uh, Python, uh, Unity, so in C Sharp, uh, Qt, C. Um, so yeah, we try to have bindings for other, other environments to uh, well, leverage what to provide. And the interesting thing is, um, so... Uh, question, do you use a generic uh, binding interface to create... No, I didn't make them. So every time you try to make yeah. something that fits in the target yeah. environment, so you really don't find the same kind of binding in, well, let's say, JavaScript that you Because want. there are general binding whatever tools that you can use. Well, there is a C API that then every environment should be able to leverage, yeah. but then yeah. we try to put the emphasis on you know user experience, uh -huh. so and also programmer experience. So okay. if programmer has the habit of some way of doing things, we try to well see and provide something that fits. Okay. So for instance, in PD. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, so in PD, for instance, we provide some boxes, and uh, these boxes will be automatically visible from ISO. So I have some parameters. So here my parameter is called node ratio. Its default value will be four. It will be a floating point and has some description. Uh, and these parameters are linked through the network. So the first thing, so before I start, if you like to control your stuff from the network, we get for free a WebSocket API to query uh, the state of our device. So here I can go here and I will get a JSON of all the parameters in my PD patch. So I know and I can get the main, max, the current value. So it's useful if you want to make a control surface. And I score is able to leverage this. So here I can see. Up, disconnect, reconnect, refresh all my parameters and for instance, I don't know if mode ratio I set uh, to uh, 15 and uh, in PD it's 15 and now in, if in PD uh, up, I set, I change it I should uh, see it change, uh, so it's uh, linked in real time through SE so like this and uh, everything tries to operate in the smoothest way uh, possible so, uh, like I said, so we start, we have in iStore first a single point, so if you want to play a note, you just do this. So for instance, uh, if I want to set the color of my processing patch to, let's say, red, here I add a small point, let's say 1, 0, 0. Uh, this will go much further. And 
play, so it goes here and it goes red, well, when we tell it to. Then, if I want, let's say, to change my color across time, I just drag and add a curve, and my curve will go, for instance, with C device color at So here I will do a fade of the red component. Uh, so it's slowly fading from uh, black to, to red. So and here I'm having another fade in a loop. So we can just see it here. And uh, so it's not red. It's from uh, all components to zero to all components to one. So well, it can control single values, arrays, strings. What, whatever kind of format you would like to receive your values in. So yeah, so automations, on the production is very important. And something useful for interactive arts is twinning. So um, you know when you're doing live performance, sometimes well you change parameter well, well on your console surface or whatever, and this differs from the value you recorded in your uh, in your scores, for instance in Cubase or whatever. So this allows to use the running value and instead of going from, for instance, zero, it will go from the running value of your slider or whatever and continue the curve with the correct interpolation ratio. So if you want to make a pretty, uh, let's say, pretty curved values, up, like this, uh, can't get to the right. And uh, here it will start from white. Now, since we end at white, uh, instead of starting at zero, we start at the last value, which, which was white of the previous loop. So it's very it's for smooth behaviors in the timeline. Then uh, one more interactive feature is mapping. So automating is you write values and you send them somewhere else. Well, mapping is you have some input values and you want to give them to somewhere else with maybe some kind of transformation. So here, for instance, I will map my some control of my MIDI surface to something else. And the difference, if you did it in, let's say, PD or whatever, basically it would always be here. While with ISCAR, you can say, OK, I want this, map this mapping to take place for two seconds to five seconds. And then maybe you will want to change your mapping for something else or just don't do it anymore. So you can just put everything and score it in time however you want. And if you are really nerdy and uh, like to <laughs> code a bit, you can even put some uh, JavaScript code directly in the box and at every tick it will run and so you can send whatever values you want to the network, to MIDI, to... Uh, so basically it's uh, complete scripting capabilities and you can take the current time as argument to make, well, time-related uh, processes and behaviors. So you can put uh, things in verticality, so everything vertical will be synchronized. But, uh, as you can see, there is something which is quite complex. If you want to have interactivity in the score, at some point you will write something and you don't know how long it will last until well, it's actually played. So this is why in iScore we have, well, this dot dashed lines and dashed means we don't know how much time it will take. So it can last uh, forever or until something happens. Or, uh, so I'll try to make a small example with my control surface, if it works. Uh, okay, so here my, I've got this little beauty which has X, Y, Z controls on every button. It's fantastic. But, so here, for instance, you can see here, I just do some pressure of the finger and I get this free power exchange. And I say, okay, I want this to, oh, oh, oh. I, can't uh, I want this to, to continue looping. Up to the moment I do some, well, some pressure value, so let's say uh, 127. So here I just can see, as you can see, it's a MIDI device control number 23. I go here and let's say uh, the trigger condition will be uh, uh, this is greater than let's say 100. 
So right now it's zero. I'm playing. I'm sorry, I have very small screen resolution state, so I can't do a lot of things. So here the box is executing, and now, well, I pressed, and well, it stopped. And if I had put something after, well, it would have gone after, well, my interaction. So you can embed interaction in the score uh, this way. So another way is to put conditions. So conditions are for programmers a bit like if, then, else, or switch case. That is, when you reach some point in time, you can say, OK, if something uh, is in a given state, I want to do this. Else, if something is in another state, I want to do something else. So um, I can say now, after my uh, interaction, uh, I let it some time. OK, go here. And uh, just making my score a bit bigger. And I say, okay, after one second, we'll do a check of my uh, controls. So I forgot it's number 23, I think. Yeah. And uh, okay, if it's at zero, we'll do something. Else, if it's at uh, max value, we'll do something else. So we'll do this with. Uh, uh, comparisons to, well, be assured to do something. So, for instance, I can do condition will be uh, first case. Uh, what was it already? Uh, yeah, this one and condition. Up. This will be greater than 50, and in the other case, it will be uh, condition smaller than 50. So, and you don't need to cover all the possible values. You can just play everything at once if you want, or nothing, or... So it's really, if something uh, is true, then what's after will play. So here, I just play it again. So I, I like to show the processing score at the same time, but I can't really because, well, there's not enough screen space. So here it's waiting for my first press. I do it, and it took this much because I was under 50. And if I replayed it, so for instance, let's do like from here. Now I stay here, and so I press my uh, button, and we take the upper branch. And what's here is entirely discarded from the score, and it, it just won't happen. So basically, this allows you to program, but in time, instead of programming, you know, max logic or which is even non-shot. So, and, so, for an explanation, so we call these conditions, and these trigger points. So, trigger points, you can give them a minimum and maximum value. That is, maybe you want something to happen when a dancer crosses the stage, but if the dancer takes too much time to write, maybe you still want to, to go on after some time, or maybe you just broke his uh, ankle in the stair and he won't make it. <coughs> So you have the possibility to set minimum and maximum times for every interaction. So here, for instance, I can say, OK, if I don't play my, uh, my pad after two seconds, then, uh, well, I won't be able, I, I will continue anyway. So here, play, it's looping, and I let it, and it goes and takes the lower branch. So, uh, and finally, in terms of interactivity, you can control all the execution speed of any kind of element. So for instance, here I select my top score. So as you can see, everything is a bit uh, hierarchical. So here you have the first level, then another level, another level. Here you have another hierarchical level. And everything in the background influences what's happening on the bottom. So here, uh, I play it, and I can just jam it. And even the sound is uh, time-stretched with a uh, libre background that Paul Davis mentioned earlier. And, well, everything will follow the time, but you can also have different timelines going on. For instance, I make this uh, slower. And this will go faster, so you can have varying times, 
And then you even have a WebSocket API if you want to control from your iPad or something. You can just uh, jam with every box in the in this core to well. If your performers are going too slow, then you can at least try to catch with them or make the score catch with them. So uh, if you want, so may, maybe uh, do any of you have a computer or so if you want to, to then to take it out. So if you want to install it and try to, to manipulate a bit, then then I work how to work with external devices. So with what kind of software you work? Uh, so Super Collider, uh, Super Collider, okay. Uh, so so you do you use any specific software uh, for music making? Uh, I, I have Windows. Okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, I can. Mm. Okay, but maybe mm. uh, you don't know what kind of easy software will work on Windows on OSC. Does somebody know? Uh, simple OSC generating some software on Windows? Uh, I don't have. <laughs> uh, okay, maybe it should score. work. Hmm? Muse score. Oh, Muse score. I, I don't know if. Muscore has an OSC API, maybe, but I don't I'm sure. I'm not sure about the Muse. <coughs> the Muse itself. Hmm? Muse? <coughs> Muse itself. This oh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I, I think it. Uh, I think it runs on Windows, but I'm not, okay. not 100% sure. Yeah, I've not used Windows in ages. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm not really yeah, not, I use, use Windows, but I'm not the only one at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, but maybe we want to. to or something, so what well, you can see. Yeah, I can. Oh, yeah, really, yeah, I'll show you that. So, if you have um, any, if you have your software that you like and use it every day, sometimes it will only have a plain OSC API, so you want to, um, well, add it in iSports so that you can control it. So, you can say, okay, I want to add my wonderful OS device which uh, sends and receives on some cards that I don't know exactly which cards. And uh, my device. And then you can add by hand your own parameter. So let's say uh, which is a floating point parameter. And you can set minimum, maximum values. Click modes. Click modes are interesting. It's a way to set the, what happens when a value reaches the minimum and the maximum. So is, maybe there is a pen, but um, does someone know there is a way? Okay, well, I'll make some data or whatever drawing. Uh, again. No, nothing. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot nothing. Uh, well, if you don't want to click, basically, if you have uh, low or high values, it will just let them go. You can want to click, so like saturation, it will get like this. And sometimes you want, if you go like this, well, sometimes you want to make either a triangle wave, so you want to look like this, a bit like... I'm unregistered. So sure. Oh, fantastic. Uh, okay, so, here. so, let's say that my main and max, so 0, 1, and with the values I send to something like this. So they start before and then and after. So clipping will do something like this, so the traditional clipping version. Uh, wrapping will do something like... Uh, I don't have it. I don't know. Hold on. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, the other will do something like this. So I'm not sure exactly for this one, but it will yeah, go uh, either this way, this way, or this way, and this way. So this is, for instance, if you have, let's say, a rotative, uh, let's say, wheel that goes from 0 to 1, and if you go past one, you want it to continue doing a circular motion. So it's for this kind of usage. And you can set units to your uh, values. That is, for instance, uh, for colors, you can work in RGB space, HSV, um, 
for some you can work in uh, linear gain, midi gain, so through 127 decibels. Um, orientation, so if you have some OpenGL values, you can well, handle them in whatever angle format you like. Um, distance or the position also. If you want to work in Cartesian or spherical coordinates, so if you send from 0 to 1, it will change the radius instead of the position. So, I score takes care automatically of the um, unit conversions. So, if the device says, okay, I'm in uh, Cartesian coordinates and you send it some um, polar coordinates, it will convert them without you doing anything. So, now I have my value, so floating points, and well, it won't go anything anywhere, and that's not really interesting. So, now I'll do a less manual way, which is learning. So, here I have my uh, processing device, which is on these ports. So, processing, uh, I can just do learn and get all the, so I have some OSC messages that will be sent and I get them here and I can start scoring with them. So, for instance, uh, my mouse position, uh, particle density, so here, radius, for instance, I press play and the little dots were supposed to appear because oh yeah it's not enough I have set another maximum uh, so okay so here I have my dots which will become bigger and bigger and bigger so <coughs> Okay, so, but then it's not really quite automatic. So, if you have also software that you know you can write um, its OSC API in a XML format and we can load it, but the best way is automatic discovery. And automatic discovery is made possible with our um, the library I mentioned earlier. So, for instance, here I have my PD patch uh, with its parameters, and here I can just add device, find device, it looks for all the devices on the network automatically. OK, OK. And I get all the parameters that I have in my PD patch. And so this one has five parameters, but some artists that we've been working with have north of 17,000 parameters in their patch, and it still works, well, more or less well. Uh, so basically, if you want to port our API in your software, it will make it able to well, discover easily through the network so it works with Bonjour, uh, ZeroConf, I don't know if you are aware of well, this technology is like for printers like this. Okay, so uh, now, well maybe it's a bit technical, so I will just show with some capabilities so you can um, put some sound files Uh, okay, okay, so here you can just drag your sound files. temporal structures that I've shown are also available for sounds. So for instance, you can have nested hierarchy levels. So here I'll add the box and go inside. Well, and we'll try to work together to get you to do it. And I can just add, uh, well, let's say a small sound here. And let's say this one. Okay, and here I have a nested hierarchy level. So, 
basically you can a bit like you will nest max patches you can nest boxes and go deeper and deeper and deeper and you can add effects and the well in traditional DAOs you have all your uh, tracks so let's say drum, guitar, bass and these tracks are mixed in the sand, return and uh, master bus so here it works hierarchic hierarchically so that is uh, these sounds are playing and they are mixed together at this level and which is mixed with this at this level and it goes <coughs> up every time what do you mean mix? Because there's one after the other. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, I'll add one, for instance. Uh, let's say here. Uh, it's it's more clear with another song. Um, here. Okay. Here I add some sound in parallel. Um, So it, it will just play together at the same time. And, uh, well, let's say the mixing operation happens at each uh, hierarchic level. So here, for instance, then I can add some sound effects. So let's say um, add process in the slot effect. So if you know LV2 plugins and or Faust, it works with both. So here, let's say and a reverberation, okay. And since we want to have our uh, reverb lasts, we'll make it last forever. So, so here I have all my sound parameters that are accessible, and I can, if I want, do some, uh, let's say, automation of my effects. So. Here I added an automation for VTK and if I play something. So you can very easily automate. And earlier I mentioned mappings. So here as you can see this effect has some input values but also output so it's able to send us every time it's uh, well I don't think it's RMS, it must be peak level maybe. And if you want, you can use this peak, uh, this peak value to control other parameters. That is, if somebody makes some loud sound, you want to trigger something else in the score. So all the values are available everywhere. Uh, let's say uh, here I want to do okay, a mapping. Mapping, um, and I want to map from the input volume to uh, the radius of my sphere. So, okay. So, if I play this now, this mapping will occur at the same time. And if we go here, Somebody wants to invest it before experimenting. <laughs> yeah, no. I can do this. No, it would be not very good. So, yeah, just, just need to charge up my remote. <laughs> so, as you can see, the size of the circles was mapped to the RMS volume to of uh, my, uh, of the, well, the volume of my audio file. You can also use live inputs or uh, well other sound sources, and you can have send and return between boxes. So you can well create some sound here and manipulate it afterwards in your in your. Uh, 
some story about uh, Reba Dyke. <laughs> um, so, uh, and something interesting is that iScore is entirely built on a plugin API. So, for instance, all the auto processing parts is entirely shipped as a plugin. So it won't be here if you download it on the website. Well, you have to build it by hand because it requires post, which is somewhat complicated to build. And then you just add it, and uh, so if you like to write plugins for softwares, you can go quite far with Acecore's plugin API. And every part of the user interface is actually implemented as a plugin. So there are 20, well, 15, between 15 and 20 core interfaces that you can re-implement to provide any kind of behaviors, boxes, sounds. So, and hopefully I'd like to add VST also support maybe one day. <laughs> so uh, this and what's missing for now? So it only works in my own stereo, a bit like a button light. Uh, I'm still not able to display LB2 UIs and I've skimmed a lot in cute vector source code, but <laughs> I, I have a hard time understanding all LB2 so what's UIs. Yours anyway. <laughs> <laughs> And as you can see, currently it has no notion of musical time. That is, you don't have measures, you don't have bar, uh, bars, you don't have, well, black, uh, white uh, notes. It's very straight time, and you just, it's more seconds, seconds because it's started as something more for visual artists than musical artists. Uh, but one day I hope to be able to add some kind of, you know, being, being able to trigger something and for it to wait, not to wait the end of the bar, so a bit like Ableton Live and stuff like this. And of course, packaging for distributions, Linux distributions is missing, so currently there is an app image, but yeah, it's not enough. And uh, what I'm working on is um, using the execution engine as an embedded score player, so for instance, you can now. Once you have written your score, you can load it into your data or in an Android application, and it will be autonomous. And then uh, you can, um, that's maybe more interesting, control your score through the network. So here, so it's a bit experimental yet, but I have my iStore instance, and, um, well, somebody can join on the network, so I'll just join here. And here I have all my data structures, and uh, first everything will be synchronized so the edition can work with multiple people. So it's not been tested out yet, and there will certainly be a lot of crashes. But you can also have multiple executions synchronized, so you can say, I want this, uh, this to run on one computer, and this to run on another computer, and I want them both to be uh, synchronized in time. So maybe um, uh, if you want, so who has it installed already? So maybe we can just go in soccer and it will be, I think, more nice this way. <coughs> so, okay, nice. It's working with us, cool. Uh, okay. I don't know. I didn't say the opposite. No, 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 it's okay. Okay, well. Oui, c'est super. Ok. Je ne sais pas si ça marche sur Windows parce que je teste pas très souvent. Et après, ok. Maybe, on which network are you? Maybe because, since it all works through the network, maybe you can control my computer instead of controlling. So, I just get everything. And, um, oh, I don't have Wi-Fi. Uh, does somebody have, well, I, I try to make a Wi-Fi with my mobile phone. Uh, oh, that's not uh, I just set up a local Wi-Fi network. Or maybe. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's you. Um, does somebody have internet cables, maybe? No. Oh, but. Internet, uh, Ethernet cables. 
Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. So that we can, if you had two, that will be fantastic. Talking about this one. Oh, uh, before. Uh, I think uh, that will be fine. Just have to. Okay. Oh, fantastic. This is a short one. Uh, yeah, I don't but then I don't want it. Okay. If it still works. Oh, I can be here. 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 I can be So you can be here. I can be here. I can be here. I can Okay. Well, it should work, I guess, on Ubuntu. It's, I think very much tested. Uh, okay, just have to find my adapter. Uh, can I take your uh, Ethernet cable? Oh, yeah. Thanks. But it's a short one. Oh, it's okay, just to. It's <laughs> uh, it's uh, um, <laughs> Okay. And I want to. Okay. So, well, if somebody else wants to connect. Uh, oh, no, there is. I felt that. You can't do that. Well, that's going to be a bit complicated. <laughs> uh, okay. Not working? Well, it doesn't have. Uh, well, I will have to set up static IP address to you, Sam. Yeah, it's going to take a bit of time. So, we'll try to do that. Can you run a system? Is that more interesting to do? Okay, yeah, so now, okay. I'm setting up, so I don't know if it's in the Kai Studio. Oh, no, it's not, but however, so uh, if you're on Linux, so I use AppImage. So AppImage is basically a package that should work on every distribution. So you can go on the um, GitHub. So for Linux users, here you can download this application and it should work on any Linux distro, <coughs> hopefully. And then you have to add the execution rights, so chmod plus x, and it should run on most Linux distributions. I haven't tested on everywhere, but hopefully. Uh,
So maybe the easiest is to go on the website, which is www.i-score.org. Okay, okay. And so on this website. So here, so it links to the GitHub link. So. Okay, that's easy. Mm -hmm. We are ice for all this. Yeah, nice, cool. Which distribution are you going to do? This 16. Okay. And which distribution? Uh, Ubuntu. 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 I'm yeah. still downloading it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. my image. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so. Um, alors, là, par exemple. Oh, oui, oui, oui. So, the software is still um, I mean, somewhere between alpha and beta, so you would certainly have bugs. I hope no crashes, but. Um, okay, so, uh, so so if you have also some super collider example patch, would be really interesting. Mm, <laughs> I don't find one, but uh, I'm um, a Faust. Uh, oh, if you well, if you have some Faust, uh, I think Faust can be compiled so to the standalone yeah. OSC. Yeah. So yeah, it, it will just work fine. So and yeah, are there other Faust users here? Okay. <laughs> okay, because yeah, uh, I saw a lot to. You can just add some Faust effect, and you can well add your Faust code inside, and it will it integrates Faust compiler. some sound with PD so uh, I can show you <laughs> the joy of Linux Alors c'est je là J majuscule O 
L, L, A. Et euh, la même chose encore une fois, j'ai majuscule O, L, A. Non, bah, bah, bah. Non, bah, je vais activer le mot de passe, ça sera. Non, c'est bon. Salut. Allez-y, où est-ce pour voir Ah, bah, je teste juste le. Ah, internet. Sorry, thank you. Set up some Wi-Fi password. Ah non, faut, rester, faut, faire, faut faire se connecter plutôt l'aide d'une clé de sécurité. Et alors, c'est la LNA. Okay. Okay. Euh, super, là ça devrait le faire normalement. C'est bon. Alors là maintenant on va pouvoir se connecter normalement sur la machine. Sorry for speaking French a bit. So processing. So I'm launching a processing instance on my computer. Um, ok, uh, now on 28, on s'en sent de ce point de deux. Alors là, normalement, j'ai rajouté du coup sur la machine à le. Moi j'ai mes paramètres dans mon logiciel que j'ai mis à l'avance en fait. Mmh. Et il faut leur dire à euh, chacun où est-ce qu'ils vont est aller. Alors, adios. Et on va dire que c'est le temps. Entre 0. Alors est-ce que ça change quelque chose si je fais 45 ici J'ai pas l'impression que la connexion réseau marche bien. Okay, seems to work. So yeah, I set up on my uh, so if you want to, to join uh, on my mobile phone, so you will be able to control this uh, this raw stuff. So I just write down the key of my mobile phone. Uh, so, uh, so uh, the Wi-Fi uh, is this one. Password is Jola. Jola. Uh, and this it's USC. Alors, device port.
So this is if you want to control this software. But if you have your data or whatever kind of music software on your own machine that works with OSC, that's maybe the easiest way. So uh, who has some experience with the OSC protocol? I am, but for the handling, you have to go to some, some code set. Yeah. <laughs> How do you control by a strong ice car? Uh, so, uh, <laughs> okay. So, here, um, if I launch ice car, ice car. So, ice car has one part for everything that is related to network communication, timeline, and then various properties of objects. So everything related to network will be on the left. So you can do a right click, add device, and uh, for me I will just add OSC device source with the ports I have here, but then if you have your own software, that's maybe better. Um, what is the OAC device? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, did you connect to my Wi Fi? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. So, uh, yes. Also, oh, it's a uh, small text. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a small text. Yeah. 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 So it's on my machine. Okay. Um, for instance, so here we can add uh, well OSC containers and details. So here I have one which is called particle. I think particle. Uh, I'll just add them to check. So let's do a bit of learning. Um, uh, 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 uh. Okay. So. Particles slash, for instance, either density or radius. Density? Yeah. So you can add density, for instance, and density will change the amount of triangles. So, uh, could you add it? No. No. Ah, là, là, faire un. Bon, peut-être, vous, on va le faire avec, je pense, ce paramètre, et peut-être, vous, il va faire avec tout, et. Mais c'est contrôlé un peu comme ça, le. I'm sure. Okay, so part particle okay, uh, yeah. Yeah, like this. Just that? Just, just like this, yeah. And then add another one as a child. And it will be here, uh, yeah, as a child. And um, density, yeah. And for this one, add value type with set float. Yeah, but okay. Okay, and now uh, what if you try to and it let's say uh, 50. So here, yeah, it's just to believe. Yeah. Uh, okay. 50. Yeah, 50, for instance. Okay. Um, I don't think. Maybe it's changing time? Uh, uh, no, I changed something. I don't know if 50 is really that much. Uh, let's see. 100, maybe. Uh, what if you resend 50? No, I have. Do it again? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, it worked. Okay, so you can control this parameter and you can control the other parameter. And uh, maybe. Um, it's five now. Oh, Yola. Just. Oh, yes, uh, it's a uh, Yola. Uh, the password is just in there. It's a Yola, Yola. Uh, so, with, uh, with space. Uh, no, there's no space, sorry. I've controlled this. Uh, yeah, you are controlling the size of the circles and uh, re is controlling the amount of triangles. And oh, all you send the I think I cried. Yeah. 20,000. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's going to die. I can sense uh, the heat of my computer building. <laughs> okay. Yes. That's what you get for letting and the Federal Network Sorry. <laughs> that is okay. I should have put some min and max limits. Well, it's dead. <coughs> it's dead, Jim. Okay. 
I mean for good. Yeah, that's the first bug report. Yeah. Well, actually, that's a problem on my uh, processing software because, well, I just didn't have any any safe limits, and I should have. Uh, oh, sorry. Alors, euh, non, en fait, ça c'est le port de euh, Et ça c'est le port auquel il bon. Donc, il faut que ça sur ce port-là. Je crois. Alors. Euh, running on UD4. Ah oui, 5750. Listening port. Ok, ouais, bah, c'est bon, c'est ça du coup. Et so we're trying to make it work with Faust here. Yeah. Ah, euh, pourquoi est-ce qu'il ne veut pas euh, Okay, so this should be running again. So maybe the safe limit is, I you know. I will try not to put 1000. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean 200 maybe. Oh, you have to start with this again? Okay. I'm sorry? No. I don't know. Um, this is not showing up. This is just something. I don't think so. It's just UDP. I, oh. I don't have success. Yeah, it's nice. That's why I have the OEC, but is it everything? Well, then you have to add all the you know, OEC nodes. So okay. here are um, my OEC nodes. Oh, okay. So to change and device OSC Jola. Where I want? What? Okay. Learn. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, the, the, I can everyone see the uh, the names here. So the variables we have are color, which is, well, RGB color, uh, then sensory radius, so... Ah, oui, alors ça c'est sur cette application de la partition, mais après, par exemple, alors là, pour faire changer le maître de dans le temps, là, il suffit de faire un modifié déposé, et là, ça va faire évoluer la courbe. Ah, ça 
fait une courbe en gros, et qu'après on peut lire et qu'il va faire évoluer les choses. Non. Ok, uh, could you get the connection? I think so. Yeah. Ok, nice. So now we have to add the OSC nodes and child nodes. Yeah. So uh, go to add child. Uh, add, add child. Add child yeah. And so um, we can use maybe just color for this one. Color, ok, and uh, that value type just here set, uh, yeah, and VEC 3F, so it's uh, RGB color, so VEC 3 ok, and this should be enough, hopefully. Ok, yeah, to keep it simple. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, ok, I'll just put it full screen. So, uh, Okay, so everything is quite small, getting bigger. Nice. That was me. Cool. And so here you will be able to control the color. So here, for instance, you can drag uh, this. Uh, oh, you, so you do a drag and drop, so well, not of the text, but of the whole. Or uh, maybe you should just click somewhere else to lose the focus. Um, okay. And just drag. Like here, yeah, for instance, on the blue dot, or whatever you want, actually. Yeah. And now, with space, you can play. Uh, okay. And hopefully, when it goes here, it will become black. I think. And it did. Okay. Oh. So it just sent one OSC <laughs> message. A great start. And then, well, you can. Right interpolation, some but but now if everyone starts to have some setup going, um, hmm. what are the other values that are available? Do you have a list or a for this one? It's really a small batch. So uh, there is uh, well, there are not that many values, and I'm trying to get one people per value to. Because else everybody will have some this with what they're trying to do. Um, I'll just maybe shut the light because it's a bit hard to see. Uh, yeah. Can you see, still see your computer or do you prefer me to keep the lights? Sorry, maybe I can see it. Just you will turn Well, I can, I can just. It's only keyboard light. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe like this week, this is a bit better. Um, Alors, en fait, tout, tout fonctionne presque par ici, donc des posées. Donc... Alors, alors, en fait, quand on met le vide, ça va juste envoyer la valeur à un instant donné. Et par contre, si vous mettez maintenant ici sur la ligne, euh, alors, euh, non, là, ça va se déplacer. Donc, vous recommencez là, c'est un ici. Et sur la ligne bleue. Alors, vraiment à l'intérieur de la ligne bleue, euh, sur la radio, c'est tout. Là, par exemple. C'est bien. Voilà, là, il y a une queue. Merci. 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 Alors, voilà, voilà euh, là, le seul problème, c'est que je pas à faire marcher le euh, sur la machine. Ça marche pas non plus, du coup, le. Non. Il a été sorti. C'est rigolo ça. Hmm. Oh, ça je je euh, euh, Et Hello. Hello. I 
So, je vais essayer sur ma machine pour voir. Ça vient par le coup avec Faust. Parce que là, par exemple, il n'y a pas de Faust tout en tout exécutable. Ouais. Okay. So now. So you use a message, so now we can, well, make a curve and just put it in front. So now what we can do is, for instance, change some color uh, then. I tried already. Yeah. With, um, I have numbers. Yeah, so what's the range? Uh, zero one. Zero one. Okay. So it should make it red? Yeah. It, and it's red. It's red and... And uh, so this is, um, well, let's say, the state of the network. <coughs> and mm -hmm. this is something you recorded earlier, so it will put it back to black. So here, basically, you wrote in your score that you wanted black at this point. So, uh, if you want to change, you can just go here, uh, click on the white dot, yeah. And make this another uh, Yeah, and here, for, here you have ah, the value that is recorded uh, in this score. So you can change it in the same way. Excuse me, yeah. how can I create an event something to send to Okay, so, uh, you uh, so do you do a back C? Uh, back OSC or run back OSC, do you have them? If, uh, oh no. Uh, oh, it's a big extent. It's big extent yeah, yes. so it has then you have Mr. Pitch, so yeah, you can do. Uh, yes. But so here, for instance, you can, so it's on 9996. This, uh, it's like it, uh, Okay, so you can. You can see that again? Uh, so, oh, so this is the inside, uh, the inner OSC device of ISO, so which itself can be controlled. And so, so you can do a check, for instance, uh, give it uh, a name, English, and a new type, for instance, since fruit. Okay. Okay. So those are some parameters that you can set, but for now it's not really relevant. Okay. So. Okay. Press okay. Yeah. And now here, uh, you can well, make it, and you can write value here, so just to test that it works. Okay, and uh, hopefully in PD you should have received it. I don't know where that is. Okay, yeah, that's the raw OSC value. So ah, the unpacked OSC object in PD allows to decode it. So if you're using PD, yeah, you do, uh, do D -D receive. Uh, and unpack. Oh, SC. So like this, and this gives you well uh, interesting data to work with. So I don't remember the intrinsic of it, but on the first or the second output? I don't remember. Okay. Um, so can you get something to? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, nice. oh, okay. oh, oh but it's oh, case okay. sensitive. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, let's see this case and the so. Okay, like this. And let me put some it down. Oh, oh red, green, blue. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> 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 
Oh yeah, it's on my um, Python network. Oh, oh, that's why it's not working. <laughs> no, one. Okay. no, 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 it's okay. drag drop stuff and change things in text. Go as it's in text. Oui, mais alors on va voir qu'est-ce qu'on fait de ça. Ah bah, c'est l'écriture, c'est le travail d'artiste, c'est ce qui... Non, mais... Je pouvais expliquer un peu l'image, c'est ça, mais après, qu'est-ce qu'on fait Bah, je peux... Alors, tout ce qu'on a surtout, c'est des trucs en art plastique, donc ça va être des évolutions en temps, mettons, de projecteurs, de machines à fumer, de de lecture vidéo, donc souvent ça va être des partitions qui vont couper ce, ce genre de paramètres et après alors, là ils essayent de faire marcher euh, avec du son plutôt alors, Et je peux vous sur cette zone bah, Là vous le voyez en fait sur ce logiciel c'est à dire que ça... là quand vous faites la lecture mm -hmm. hop, on va voir, sauf que certainement il y a une condition de l'ordi avec une quantité de se mettre là si je fais lecture Hop. Et là, voilà, ça fait évoluer la taille des cercles, par exemple, avec euh, une évolution. Alors ici, c'est un point d'attente, c'est-à-dire qu'il attend qu'on déclenche. Et là, hop, il continue. Et ça met tout à 74, donc on perd la chose. Mais, euh, par exemple, là, on va faire comme ça. Là, on va reprendre. Alors là, si on a des ouf, on part et ça part de zéro. Et après, ben, voilà, on va écrire comme ça l'évolution des paramètres qu'on veut et les interactions qu'on veut dans le temps. Donc là, voilà, là ils sont devenus un peu plus petits, un peu plus grands. Donc voilà, c'est vraiment... Euh, enfin, on fait du, du contrôle temps réel comme ça. Uh, did you manage to get something out of PD? Yeah, yeah, nice, cool. So, for instance, maybe controlling an OSC tile or something to get some sound? Yes. Or, um, But uh, how can create a value for something here? Okay, so for creating values, so you can drag... So I, I will show it on the screen. So now... Now that we have one quarter left, so uh, how to uh, create new elements in timeline? So most of the things you can do them by drag and drop. So for instance, here I can drag this here, and it shows where it will go. So we are at ready here, and this is what's on my network currently. So right here we can see well the values of my processing program and if I click here I see the values that are recorded so it's a queue if you are familiar with video uh, video programming uh, they are always called queues so you send first queue second queue extra and if I play at this point it will go here and send all these values by OSC so now the little plus you can also drag it and it will create either straight line or branches so you can just press the plus and the drag and so here for instance there is something that currently does nothing and again I can just do some drag so here I will take this parameter I drag it on the blue line and it creates a curve so the curve you can have multiple breakpoints so like the sensors, with shift you can adjust the curvature and you can select all the uh, easing curves if you're familiar with animation for instance so it has all the uh, common curves used here and well here it will start executing my curve so then you build everything basically Starting like this. 
So here what happens? I had a value here, which is density, uh, which was at zero. And quite often, the workflow you have is you create some things and you change some parameters, then you want to save the states, then you, you want to, to continue in well, this feedback loop. So every time you change a value or a new value was received from the uh, any kind of device you're using, it will create automation systematically. So to have well a smooth behavior in your score. So here for instance my density is now at one and now I'll set density to 0.5. I just create a new curve and it goes again so here now it goes from uh, minimum 0.5, maximum 1, and like this for. So then about editing, so you can move most things, so like this, like this, uh, so basically a vertical horizontal axis, and uh, you can add multiple, so if you have something that lasts, for instance, let's say 2 seconds, so you can set the time precisely, so 2 so it will rescale up everything and then you can add multiple behaviors that will last for this span of time so you, you have some right click right click uh, context menus and you can do add process and you can add for instance another automation so here I will have one automation for density one automation for radius so from one to 50, uh, 1, 1 to 50, 0.5 to 10, okay, and let's see what it gives, so, okay, everything's gone, uh, 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 uh. Mm. okay, so it seems that everything became transparent, uh, density, it's maybe too too low. So, and some. Okay, and radius uh, density. So, okay. It was very small values actually. So okay, so here stuff appears, and <coughs> so like this, you can create new automations and control your behaviors. Then I. Now, something interesting and which is often useful is looping. So, basically, the theoretical model of I score is quite simple. So, you. Um, I have the pen. Um, sorry, I think I left. Can, sorry. <laughs> so, here we have boxes, we call them processes. Processes. And uh, actually, in I score, everything is processed. So even the big box in which everything fits is also a process. And so processes, you can just, for instance, create some time here, and you have the total plus, and you you have a list of all the processes that you can add. So, for instance, let's say you want to map your mouse position on the, let's say, the size of the balls. So, I'll make mapping. And so, every process has a different color to make it easily remember well. Okay. Um, so, here I want to take the position of my mouse here. Uh, Device, mouse move, which will be between 0 and 500, let's say, and I want to map it to my density, so 0 to 100. And at this point, I will have this mapping that will occur in my score, so I have to play. Uh, some time is required for it to come to this point, and now. Okay, as you can see. Pardon, pardon, no. Oui, oui, c'est bien connecté. 
Oh, parce que j'ai plus de signal sur le diapo. Ah mince, euh, bah, je sais pas parce que là il a l'air de... Ouais là-dessus ouais, mais après ce qui sort de l'ordi non, le... Mmh. Tout est bon. Je sais pas, euh, ça, ça a Enfin je vois le Windows qui tourne là mais... Par contre dit vous avez dépassé le moment d'essai autorisé. So, and here, uh, as you can see, the mapping only lasted for a given amount of time. And if I want to make it last forever, I will add a trigger point. So trigger point says I want to do something until until an event happens. So here you have this little uh, point in the, in the toolbar, and this has trigger. So trigger means instead of relying on the duration on the score. We will wait for something external to happen. So here, and it makes this behavior for now eternal. So if I play, okay, eternal it will loop or oh, it won't loop. It will just continue forever, and I will show loops after. Yes, but the value will stay fixed. Oh no, no, it, it will continue. So here, for instance, the mapping between my mouse and the, the density, well, it's always, uh, it, for, as long as I don't stop the score, it will keep mapping forever. So here, now, if I, now if I stop it, so I will have some time after, now I press it to stop while it continues, but now, the mapping does not operate anymore. It's it's done its job. It's start. It stopped at executing, and the remain uh, the remaining parts of the score. Well, if they want to do other mapping, they can, but it won't be always here. Uh, okay, and so here I triggered it by hand. But for instance, like I showed earlier with the the pad, you can say, okay, I want to continue. And when, uh, my, for instance, uh, I go past some position, then I want it to, to stop. So then it's up to, well, it's the programs you, you create and their parameters. It's up to you to choose which parameters you want to score and uh, ça va? <laughs> yeah, c'est pas la journée. <laughs> bon. Uh, okay, okay. So now, uh, loops. So this is, let's say, some kind of permanent behavior. And now, like I said, everything works with processes. So, no, voilà. Now, I add another process, which is called loop. So, here you can, well, just choose it. And the loop is a special kind of box. So, in this box, there is basically the parent and the child. And the child will keep going as well forever. So here I can skip play. And you see that as soon as it's finished, it starts from the beginning. So if you have some, well, so let's say a beep or something, you can put it here. And it will, well, play the song. And if you want to have an infinite loop, for instance, here, I want my density to loop forever between uh, 0 and 100. And I do the same, I just add a trigger point here. And let's play. Okay. One. Okay. Um, so things change. And as you can see, the density, oh, well, it's a bit complicated because at the same time I control it with my mouse move and with the. Uh, with this loop, so maybe I'll put bridges instead. Uh, okay, play from here. And up. Oh. This is me. <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> yeah. So as you can see, here I have my loop which change forever the size of the circles, and my mouse which does the behavior on the number of triangles. So, and um, we control the fantastic color change. 
Yeah, so, <laughs> so well, that's a nice way to make distributed performance, actually. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I think it's full, so I don't know if you have questions. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I'll ask this question. <laughs> so uh, well, we, this is still alpha, so we're planning to do a 1.0 release by the end of the year. There are still, let's say, usability questions, bugs, stuff like this. But, uh, well, yesterday it ran at a show for, uh, at Bilbao. Uh, maybe I can show a video. Uh, La Pantegral. So, for instance, this is a score made in uh, Unity 3D. So, Unity is a, um, a video game programming environment. And, well, it's a growing tree which is controlled by dancers on stage. So, um, okay. Not very interesting this video. Okay. So basically this is a 3D score with music and two dancers on stage. So they control with their mobile phones some behaviors and the tree grows in different ways according to what they are doing. So this is the kind of work that we well, can do without too much problems. So, some examples. So, here for instance, I score controls the displacement of the camera in a well, 3D space. So, because that will be the public uh, well, the audience. audience. Thank you. Uh, the audience has uh, 3D glasses and uh, it's a uh, well, it's 3D projection, and well, according to what happens to what dancers do, we move in this uh, well, layering uh, with space, and so there is Unity 3D and uh, Reaper. So uh, somebody has been making an integration of Icer into Reaper to use it to control the uh, playing of sounds and uh, stuff like this. So, well, as so, you have to have some other software to do something with it. So, mm -hmm. if you have some, let's say, artistic uh, software on your machine, it's useful, else it's harder. Um, so, yeah, you had questions? So, what software there are, what's in your phone that you use to connect computers? I'm sorry? What software on your phone did you use to connect with you? Oh, I, I, I did not use any software, I just set up a Wi Fi access I point. Just, just a bit, a bit, a bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, just a very simple access point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe I can show you also if you're on a, a Mac OS. Uh, so I will show with Mac's MSP, so, which isn't available on Linux. And I was talking earlier of a uh, gentleman. So it has it has a very deep integration with Icecom. Uh, just rebooting this way. Il y a la vidéo là. Est-ce que sur macOS ça marche mieux, je sais pas. Là ça tourne. Ok, Max. Ok. So. Okay, because if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Hey, I think we will have to leave soon actually. Uh, by resting patcher. So this is a max patch with Jamma with some parameters. So. So here I have a simple 
a group with well uh, in depth and uh, well you know in pressure. It's not very good. Yeah. So so very nice uh, and step. Okay, and uh, and 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 so with ice one. I can, so I have this patch in max and I can just add device. So in max nested, choose the menu protocol, which is, uh, well, works on, uh, only over OSC. And here, right now, it's just enumerating all the parameters of, uh, <laughs> all the parameters of my max patch, and there are a few thousand parameters, so it's certainly taking some time because. I also had a whole show running in the background, so it's going to take some time, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Um, it didn't work, okay, well, that's fantastic. Uh, that must, okay. Fantastic, la la la. Okay, well, sorry, to my effect. Um, hmm. Is that to run the max OTX? <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, problem. Of that. No, that, that's a. Uh, I, I can't state how much I hate people like OS. No, no, but it's really terrible. <laughs> Save, okay, no, maybe I try another version. Okay, uh, it seems that it's not the date. We're starting Max. No, thanks, Max. Please don't. Recent patcher. Okay. Okay. Okay, maybe this will work better. Let's go. Clearly not the day to do stuff on Apple macOS, but okay, I'll do with pure data quickly. That's maybe on macOS pure data will give me some sound at least. Pure data. Patch. So, in uh, if you go on the ISO website, you have some examples, which is so the one I use with processing, but you have some with also pure data. So here, oh, thanks. Uh, simple synthesizer. So this is very simple. So th this is how uh, OSC works with PD. So with OSC, I forgot this part. I'm sorry. And. Uh, OSC, which uh, parts? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Learn. So here I should. It seems that they just don't have any kind of open network. Okay, well nothing works on uh, macOS, so that's fantastic. We should have to right at home on the next. Best of uh, its capability. 
it is, it will try to adjust. So, F2. So that's absolutely terrible to listen for a huge period of time. Uh, let's not end on such a high pitch. Now I will use my small uh, pad to create a mapping to control my filter. So right here, a device, uh, MIDI device, receive from QNEO, okay nice. And right here I'll add a mapping from, uh, let's see, and to low pass so my low pass filter goes from 0 to 20,000 ok and now forever add trigger so I need to remember which one yeah ok and here I'm mapping between 0 and 127. So that's. Oh. version of the website doesn't support all the audio features because well I have okay, okay. the button around so by the end of the year the online version will provide it but currently it's only on my computer. <laughs> yeah but no problem. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. I never tried something like this. Yeah. Just imagine with Inge so if you are interested, um, we have a chat so Twitter. So if you have some woes, uh, if you have some questions. There is a chat, we are almost always online, so you can just come and say hi. Uh, Peter, Peter is on Git space chat. Yeah, exactly, yeah. If you go on the Git repository, uh, well, you will be able to find here. Okay, very well. Thank you very much. Thank you.